Hello and welcome to Deflategate 2015. My name is Krista Myers. Ethical dilemmas came to light recently when 11 out of 12 game day balls for the New England Patriots became suddenly and mysteriously deflated. The Patriots have been under fire for the past couple of weeks as to whether or not they deliberately deflated footballs in the AFC title win over the Colts. As a result, an investigation has been launched and it will likely take several more weeks in order to conclude. Owner Robert Kraft, along with every other member of the New England Patriots, are all sticking to their guns. Each are declaring zero involvement with the deflating of these game day footballs and the investigation has no choice but to keep moving forward. New information has come to light though since the story broke. Prior to the game in question, a Patriots employee described as an elderly man took the balls into a restroom at the Gillette Stadium for all of 98 seconds according to surveillance video. Officials discovered that 11 of 12 balls used in the first half were in fact under the minimum requirement of 12.5 PSI with one of them being a full two pounds under the PSI regulations. So what does this mean? I mean, why would anybody even want to deflate the footballs in the first place? Well, many believe the answer to that lies with New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady, who reportedly likes deflated balls. People believe Brady had prior knowledge of these balls getting deflated, and they're tying these beliefs to a 2011 radio interview where Brady actually admitted that he likes using deflated balls. But, you know, the comment, it was in reference to a conduct penalty given to tight end Robert Gronkowski after spiking the ball following a touchdown against the Jets. In this interview, Brady said, you know, I didn't see it. I mean, he spikes it every time he scores, so I don't know if that's flagrant or what. When Gronk scores, he spikes the ball and deflates the ball. I love that because I like the deflated ball. Now, Brady isn't buying the fact that his team used deflated balls during the 45-7 win over the Indianapolis Colts in the AFC Championship. He continues to deny any and all involvement or knowledge of the deflation of the balls. So, the biggest advantage of deflating a ball, I mean, in general, game day balls tend to be pretty much as hard as a rock and kind of slick to the touch. So, this can make the football hard to grip, especially for those with smaller hands. You know, you add in the cold weather conditions with low temperatures coupled with rain or snow, and a ball with less pressure suddenly becomes ideal for handling. But there are, of course, disadvantages to deflating a ball as well. Lynchburg college physicist John Eric Goff told NPR, if you reduce the mass of the ball, which happens if you let a little bit of air out, the ball can decelerate faster when you throw it. What this means is that it won't go as far as it should with each throw. So what makes this unethical is the fact that non-regulated balls believed to have been tampered with then becomes cheating. So it boils down to basic integrity, which is a virtue's ethic. But not everybody's against Brady. This next clip from Jimmy Kimmel Live shows people that are actually coming out of the woodwork in order to take responsibility on his behalf, claiming that they are each, in fact, the locker room guy. Here we go. Let's check it out. My name is Donald O'Donnell. Whoops. My name is Donald O'Donnell MacDonald from the beach, just off the beach. You're welcome. Let me tell you a story. A couple Sundays back, I'm in the locker room at Foxborough. I'm Tom Brady's kid's tutor. And we hear on the walkie that the Goodyear blimp is going down. It's careening into the stadium. We hear the captain yell, we need air to save the day. Funny story. I'm at the Pats game a couple weeks back with my nephew is kind of a pain in the ass. He's eight years old and he's hacking up a lung. He's coughing really bad. He says he got bronchitis. I'm like, you don't have bronchitis and I'm not leaving the game. I paid a lot of money for these seats. A guy named Tommy told me that one of the balls had a junior in it. I tell the guy, yeah, right, no way. He says, yes, way. And he says, that's how he got a Hyundai Elantra. Now, Tommy does have a Hyundai Elantra, so I think the guy's telling the truth. So I go and I, I, I take a football. I don't want to squeeze all the air into his little lungs because, you know, I don't want to ruin the football. So I, I just take a little bit of air out, out of most of them, like 11 out of 12 of them. And, and it does the trick. It, it, it absolutely saves his lungs. So I let some of the air out of the balls to release the genie. Now, in retrospect, not smart. I start sucking air out of the regulation balls in order to save those people's lives. I saved 17 people's lives. Tom Brady had nothing to do with it. But let me tell you something. If he did, he would have done the exact same thing because he's a 
hero. I just slated those balls myself. Right? I did it. I'm the perpetrator. If you don't want to believe me, there's nothing I can say to change your mind. I'm turning myself in. My name's Ryan Salty Flanagan. I'm from Roslindale, Massachusetts. If you don't believe me, go f yourself. I love you, touchdown, Tommy. It was me. <laughs> All right, so clearly uh, we may never know the true identity of the locker room guy because he has yet to be revealed, but one thing is for certain with this issue, cheating is ethically wrong. Thank you for watching Deflategate 2015. My name is Krista Myers.